let's get started. Uh, God bless everybody. Welcome to the house of God. Uh, we finished the question. So with a message that I have uh, today, and it's actually uh, toward the, the young people here today, and it's spirituality in youth, okay? Spirituality in youth. Is it possible? Question. Okay? Many parents and churches are naturally concerned for their children. That is true. Uh, they want the best for them. We want the best for our children. You know, obviously, most of you, have, how many, raise your hand if y'all have, anyone is actually has kids. I know Cindy, Juan, Marlene. Okay, so pretty much other than us, mature adults here, everybody else is teenagers and, okay. So, uh, but should we expect our children to be spiritually minded? especially as they go through adolescence when they are confronted on every side by immorality and materialism okay so is it possible to be spiritually minded when you're young if so how and why should young people want to focus on developing spirituality so i the answer is of course yes and we're going to go through a couple of uh we're going to go through a, a couple of uh examples okay let's go to the old testament and first we got joseph obviously joseph everyone know the story of joseph right the coat of many colors he got sold into slave slavery and uh became second to pharaoh but before that joseph resisting fornication in genesis 39 7 through 10 it says and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife casting longing eyes on Joseph. So she was checking him out and she said, lie with me, which means, you know, come sleep with me. Right. She wanted him and she was checking him out, but he refused to his master's wife. So obviously he was young. Obviously, he's very spiritually minded. He was able to resist uh, the sin and corruption. Uh, we have people like uh, David fighting for the honor of God. You know, he was young. He was able to, to, to basically be so spiritually mature at his young age. Um, we have Daniel. Uh, not, not to defy himself with the portions of the king's delicacy, nor with the wine which he drank. So Daniel was young, but he was able to go against what the king proposed to him, which was to defy himself with uh, the stuff's they were sacrificing their food and, and drinks to idols, and he said no. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refusing to worship uh, idols. In Daniel 3, 6, 16, 18, it says, These young men displayed faith and fortitude in their service to God. Uh, so we know, hold on. So obviously in the Old Testament, these were also young people that were able to, to kind of grow spiritually minded uh, to be spiritually minded in their young years. New Testament, we have examples. We have Mary who found favor with God and rejoiced in him. We have people like Timothy uh, who despite his, young, uh, his youth was uh, to be an example to others. In 1 Timothy 4.12 it says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So like I said before, yes, there is certainly room in the kingdom of God for the service of young people. And we're all young people. I, I, you know, we're all young, but I'm really primarily talking to you guys that are actually between the ages, like, you know, the teenage years going into your like early, uh, early thirties or late. It's, it's getting higher up because people I feel like are getting married later and stuff like that, but still. That is the focus that we're going to go over today. I believe that in this room, this room is filled with a lot of young people that have uh, such an awesome and great opportunity to be able to be that pillar, that example, to show that great testimony in this walk with your walk in Christ. I do feel that this is the chosen generation uh, that is going to make a huge impact on the Christian church and the Christian faith. Uh, so we have to work together. We have to be spiritually minded. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Father, creator of all the universe, King of kings and Lord of lords, we worship you. We ask, Father God, that you give us the uh, wisdom and the knowledge 
that we may grow, Father God, and be spiritually minded. I ask, Father God, for an anointing upon upon all the people here in this room, especially upon the young people that are going out to the world and being confronted with all sorts of corruption and sin, that you give them wisdom and that we grow spiritually mature in your name. In Jesus' name, we love you, we worship you, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we say, amen. Okay, so let's get to, to the point today. How I w- we're making examples of different people in the Bible that were young, but were able to overcome a lot of things that most mature people and adults wouldn't would have been able to. So never let just because people think that you're young, and just because you know uh, you might not be as experienced as a lot of people, doesn't mean that God can't use you in a great, great and powerful way. Like I said. All these people in the Bible were young, and there's many more examples. And I do, like I said before, I do believe that this is the generation going in these last days that are going to make the biggest impact in the world today. Uh, so I do believe that many young people demonstrate their faith and service that is possible to be spiritually minded in youth. But it, like I said before, is it possible? I know from experience that there is so much temptation and peer pressure out there in the world to keep walking in our Christian path. Um, first of all, tell me, tell me some examples, and I'm going to get your feedback today. What are, what are some examples that you believe are temptations that are like pretty much uh, being pressured on you guys today? Like, what would you say are things that you feel like, man, this is something that I do think is uh, prevalent in in our society today? Anyone? Good. Music. Music is something very, very powerful and deceptive if if used in the wrong way. Anyone else? Other things? I'm just saying, I I have some things, but I want to see from y'all point of view, since y'all are living in that age group right now yeah social media uh what's that sammy okay oh so okay so social media is a big one the culture yeah definitely the culture the way people are living today like it's so immoral and corrupt more than any any time maybe maybe compared to like noah's time i don't know anyone else wardrobe the way we dress the way we look the way we are presented of course yes One more. False doctrines. That is a a big one, too. Basically, indoctrination on our on our society and our young people, starting from like kindergarten all the way to we that we're in the university. So, yes, these are all good examples of things that are are um, basically uh, they're targeting. The enemy is targeting you guys today. Social media. uh, So said. Social media is something that I think is very, very, very uh, prevalent today as far as uh, being filled with corruption and sin. Uh, when I was younger, um, growing up, uh, there was obviously temptations, but that's one thing that I didn't have. I mean, I grew up, uh, we didn't have internet, so we didn't have social media. So obviously we didn't ha- have exposure to social media the way you guys are. And that is something that I know is very, very, very impactful on what you guys do. I mean, it's basically a, a, an unlimited source of uh, uh, information. And, and you could just at the, the tap of your you know, finger on your phone or on your computer, you could pretty much get into anything. So social media is a big one. I, I believe Hollywood and movies are something, I, obviously, I think, I was tempted with this stuff growing up. We did have Hollywood. We did have movies and stuff like that, but not like you guys today. Uh, like I said, you guys are able to just get movies and stuff like that at, on streaming services and just at at the tap of a, a button. And when I was younger, of course, we had to go to like to Blockbuster and stuff like that. And we'd go for hours. I remember going to Blockbuster and looking uh, for hours in the store and then realizing at the end, it's like, you know what? I didn't find anything and I would leave. You know, that was crazy. Or I would finally find a movie and I would go check out and then I had to find 
and I couldn't check it out. So that was horrible. Yeah. Um, another thing is fornication. Obviously, fornication is going to be something that is always going to be uh, a, a, a tool that the enemy uses, especially during your, your years uh, of teenage years and early 20s. And uh, music, like uh, Benji said, music is something very, very, very uh, uh, enticing, addictive. And uh, if we're not careful, it's a good way for it to start. It's almost like a gateway to start pushing us into secular music and then secular. God bless you. And then secular music goes into, you know, different areas and culture and this and that. And, and, and even today, I know we have Christian music, but even that we have to be careful with. But just because there's an artist that that is claiming to be Christian and you probably know people like this doesn't really mean that their music is actually Christian, you know. So we have to be very careful with music. Uh, drugs, alcohol, surprise no one talked about this, but drugs and alcohol is something that I believe that is always going to be uh, a constant pressure upon young people. Uh, when I was younger, I didn't really um, struggle or have a problem with drugs and alcohol, even though the people that I hang around with did. But I feel like, you know, thank the Lord that I didn't really struggle with that. But there's a lot of people that do, you know. Some of us have strengths in one area and some of us has weaknesses in other areas. Some of us might struggle with music or, or drugs and alcohol or some of us might uh, struggle with uh, fornication or different things. You know, we're not all equal. We're all created different. We all have our strengths and, and challenges. Greed. Greed is something that has been forever. And when I say greed, I mean money, you know, wanting money. Now, I know that we need money, we need wealth to survive and to live, but when money uh, becomes the main focus of what we want and live by, then that, that, that obviously will start pushing us in a dark place. Remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. And today, I, uh, uh, one of the other things I wanted to point out is vanity. Now, vanity is something that I think from... Be, be, uh, every generation that has existed, I do believe that vanity, uh, this sense of narcissism, is so prevalent in your generation today because of social media, because of Hollywood, because of all the access that y'all have. Uh, I do believe that y'all are living in a time where there is so much pressure on how we look and how we talk and what we wear uh, that that vanity we we strive to live in uh, like almost like unattainable uh, uh ways you know in this society because of what uh the world is trying to pressure us to do even in the in the christian world so yes it is possible for you guys to be spiritually minded and when i say spiritually minded i mean to be more mature even more than it, than your years uh you know that you, how old you are but you be more spiritually minded more more mature as far as your christianity but it's not easy because there is a constant warfare within uh one of the troublesome things that we deal with that you guys deal with we all deal with but is the lust of the flesh which wages uh war with the soul so let us go to galatians uh the book of galatians chapter 5 <clears throat> verse 16 through 17. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 17. And I'll go ahead and read it. It says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish lust of the flesh is a major obstacle in our christian path so you remember the spirit is 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 produced by god and the flesh is produced by sin and it is going to be constant it's in constant battle between you know we're going to be in constant battle it's going to be the spirit uh, uh, battling the flesh for the soul always and always and i'll tell you right now that the flesh 
nine times out of ten, it's always going to win because the flesh, you literally have to do nothing and the flesh wins. But in the spirit, you have to constantly work. You have to constantly be aware and be mindful and uh, carry your cross each day because the flesh is just, we're born like that. We are born into sin. That means that that without doing anything, we could be good people, but uh, you know, you can do good things and you can do good deeds and, and good works and stuff. But essentially what saves us is, is the blood of Christ. And we have to work each day on our, on our spirit in order to have everlasting life. And the flesh is going to be constantly pounding and pounding and, and trying to get you to do what is wrong, what is evil, what is sinful. Amen. So, the lust of the eyes, greed, which uh, would drown the soul. Uh, I remember uh, when I was growing up that, uh, like, when we were in the Holiness, the you know, the youth, uh, I remember seeing a lot of young people that uh, went through, I mean, we all did. We all had our challenges. But if there is one thing that I would like y'all to walk away with today as far as this message is that you guys could be spiritually minded. But one thing that I want y'all to walk away with today is that whatever you do, especially in these years that y'all are living, will impact you for the rest of your life. It's crazy that 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 your teenage years to like your mid 20s and maybe going a couple years after that will basically mold you to how you're going to live your life after the next level in your life. You know, I'm, when I say next level, like when you become an adult, like marriage and 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 what in your job and your career and your ministry, it's kind of like it's almost like the comparison of like a child from zero to like nine years old. Whatever they learn during those years pretty much molds them into what person they're going to be. Well, I believe the years that y'all living right now is spiritually what's going to mold y'all as far as how are y'all going to be as a Christian. Not all the time, but nine times I believe out of ten, what the decisions that you make right now are going to be what you are in the future. Like I said, when I was growing up in the youth, I seen a lot of Christian, uh, you know, young people growing up. And a lot of them, I mean, we're all flawed. We all make mis mistakes. But it's the intense, the intensity of the mistakes and how long we kind of wallow in those mistakes, which determine how we're going to live our life. Some people never recovered from these mistakes, you know, when it came to drugs and alcohol or or fornication or or just different uh, mistakes that they made in their young years. Now you look at them today. Some of them are not Christian. Some are in prison. And I'm not just talking about youth necessarily that came to like where I was around, but even from other churches that I knew a lot of young people that grew up and made bad decisions. And it is something that we have to be constantly battling for. You look around, uh, like I see a couple like, like me or Marlene, Cindy, Juan, that we grew up through that generation. And you look around and there's a lot of people that were in the youth during that time that are not here no more. You know, maybe they're going to other churches, but maybe they're not. And I will tell you right now that the things that you do right now in your age is going to determine what kind of father you're going to be, what kind of mother, what kind of husband, wife, you know, what kind of minister are you going to be, what kind of brother and sister you're going to be growing up. These are the years that are going to be impacting you constantly. So like I said before, if there's anything I want you to walk away with is the minimizing your mistakes at this age as much as possible. Always remembering that the corruption and sin is out there but you have to constantly, constantly be reminding yourself that this is not a game. You know, this is something that you're going to be paying for for the rest of your life. Amen. Okay, so uh, obviously uh, pride, arrogance, um, and like I said, vanity are some of the things that I think are very prevalent today. Narcissism. Uh, does anyone know what narcissism is? Because I know for the longest time, I didn't know what narcissism meant. I thought it meant like burning things down. I don't know why. But, uh, but I mean, I, that's the generation we lived in, you know? I, uh, but uh, narcissism, as far as the 
dictionary um, example would be um, definition would be excess interest in or admiration in oneself and one's physical appearance. Basically, to simplify it, someone that is narcissist is pretty much someone that all they really do is care about themselves. It's like selfishness to like on steroids, you know, like. Whether they could be good people, they could be nice, they can be sweet, they can do, they can be work, hard workers and stuff. But at the end of the day, everything that these people do uh, is always for, is always to receive something in return. Whether it's gratitude or some kind of praise or something, you know. And it is something that is growing in our generation because of all these. Uh, social medias and, and, and the growing and vanity and w caring so much for the way we look and the, how much we love ourselves, you know? Now, um, I do think that in the end days, and the Bible says that in the end days that we will become lovers of ourselves, lovers of ourselves. And I do think that that is what's happening today. You know, we have all these preachers and we have all these, like I said, modern motivational speakers and stuff. And they preach so much on how much that you should care for yourself and love yourself and put yourself first. And, you know, and and to extent, yes, those are good, you know, uh, those are good. Uh, it's good advice. But see, I think that we have been so indoctrinated into believing this that we put ourselves first bef before everything and that is where this narcissism this vanity comes from you know people they be they're, they're preaching this so much today and yet i feel like things are getting worse people are more depressed people are more struggling within each other uh depression suicide is rampant uh did you know that that suicide that there just in the United States there's 140 suicides per day every day just in the United States and the majority is young people. So it doesn't look like this is helping this motivation of loving yourself so much and caring for yourself. The reason why people are so miserable and I'm talking about Christianity is because we are loving ourselves and not loving God. You put God first in your life, then things start changing for the best. See, we are we are being indoctrinated and we're being taught that we need to love ourselves so much and that we need to put ourselves so much. And yes, I know we need to take care of ourselves and take care of the way we look and the way we dress and the way we talk. And But we are pushing that so much because of the pressure of society and social media and Hollywood and all these things and even the Christian church a lot of the Christian churches today which they're just preaching constantly caring about yourself caring about you putting yourself first if you put yourself first and love yourself first then everything will will go in place you know and then you'll love your family and then no this is not right put God first you love God first and if you do these things then things will will work out then then the blessings will come to you and to your family and to your job and and uh your ministry uh to your health that is the problem <clears throat> like i said you guys are faced with so much corruption so much sin so much temptation so much peer pressure and uh like i said when i was growing up i didn't have anything compared to what y'all were facing when our parents were growing up they had even less so i feel like you guys are in the thick of it but at the same time i do believe that you guys are also blessed with such a glorious and wonderful opportunity i look at you guys right now and y'all are way ahead of where i was when i was in the youth sitting down right there and i didn't even have a phone to be like looking at stuff but i was still like wandering and doing stuff it's crazy uh, so there is pressure uh there is that warfare uh without and within peer pressure hypocrisy apathy encouraging us to do evil like i said indoctrination 
such as so, social media, social, like the immorality, atheism, the LGBTQ, whatever, uh, so many, uh, taking, taking Christ out of schools, all these things that are being taught since y'all start kindergarten on TV, you know, it's, it's very difficult. I understand. I understand. Like right now I have three kids, three young kids, and it's constant th th that we kind of, I kind of think like, man, what can we do to keep them away from all this? What do I, what do I do to keep them away from corruption and keep them away from sin? You know, me and my wife are like, okay, well, let's take them out of public school. You know, first of all, we did that. Take them out of public school, send them to a Christian school. But I mean, that's still, you know, th those are things that help. Because right now, uh, one thing I, I want to commend you guys, because y'all going to, how many are still in public school? Everyone still goes to school. I, I commend y'all because I went to public school, and I'm telling you the majority of the mistakes that I made was because of public school, because of of, of what is taught there and because of the people that you're around. Uh, you know, you might think that it doesn't affect you, but it does. And you have to constantly, constantly be working on it, you know? Uh, it, it's just people in, in universities, just another, how many are uh, in college and university? Okay. Well, I, I, <laughs> I commend y'all because today, if you can go to university or college, especially people that go off, man, if you can make it out and still be, have your faith and be Christian, I commend you because it is almost impossible. I've seen so many young people, so many Christian people go to college, go to these universities, and they come out. <laughs> well, the last thing they do is believe in God. You know, it's because there's so much corruption, so much indoctrination, so much deception in our education system today. So what can we do? How can we become spiritually minded? You know, um, in Phil, uh, Philippians 4, 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There is help. God stands ready to help the young to be spiritually minded. Let us go to 1 Corinthians. And this is, this is something that I want you all to, to look for. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. <clears throat> when you'll find it say amen all right so it says no tempta temptation regardless of its source has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to the human experience nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance but God is faithful to his word he is compassionate and trustworthy and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. Basically, God won't give you more than you can handle. God won't give you more than you can handle. So no matter how hard the situation you feel that you're in, whether it's at school, whether it's at your job, it could even be in ministry and here in church, whether it's in your family, if you believe in, in, the, in, in Christ, if you believe in our Father, He says in His Holy Word, in His Holy Scriptures, that no matter how tough it is, that you are capable of coming out of that because God will never challenge, never give you, uh, never allow such a challenge to be against you that you are not capable to overtake. Amen? So let's give a hand clap for that. I, when I hear that, I always feel like, yes. Um, so there is ways that we can combat in order to in combat corruption and sin like I said his word obviously we know that reading his word indulging in his word prayer the church uh, in Hebrews 3 12 it says God provides everything the young need to be spiritually minded being amongst brothers and sisters like i i know when i was growing up and i use i reference myself a lot because you know i feel like that um talking to young people uh, i'm older but i'm not like 
80 or nothing like that, which I know like some people are like some uh, uh, pastors and stuff like that when they're preaching. They're like, come on, man. Y'all were like born in like the 1920s and stuff like that. So I'm not like way over there. So I kind of still have an idea of what your guys are going through. Maybe in the next couple, next decade or so, then I'm going to just totally be out of touch. But I don't feel like I'm totally out of touch yet. So I kind of have an idea uh, what you guys are going through. Um, so did you know, and this is a question for you guys. Do you know what the fastest growing religion is today? Uh, well, I'll give you a hint right now. It's not Christianity. Exactly. Islam. Yes. Muslims. Muslims take up a quarter of the world's population. Why is that? Why is that that with Christianity, you would think it'd be Christianity that we'd be growing more. I mean, all we preach about is evangelizing. We have all these means and technology of able to, to preach the gospel. We have TV, we got radio, we have podcasts, we have all these things. We have the church going out. And yet, the Muslims, they don't really do this. So why is it that Christianity is kind of standing still or actually going down in some ways as far as growing this next generation and the muslim islam is i mean is decreasing and islam is growing i'll tell you why one thing that the islam religion has and the muslims have that i can commend is they focus on their children that's you go to a muslim uh church or, or you see muslim kids and they are so like the, the way their religion is basically their way of life and 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 they pretty much keep their family intact so thinking about it every generation that passes let's say a, a, a couple a, a father and a mother muslim they have three or four kids and then they're gonna have they're gonna get married and have kids and then in like just one generation they've already tripled and quadrupled the numbers Christianity, on the other hand, we strive to, to go out and reach and evangelize, which is, yes, is, I, I believe is very important. But the problem is that today that we are neglecting our young people so much. You know, there's only so much that we can do here on Sunday, so much that, that your youth pastor can do on a Friday in a, those couple of hours. But it is the problem is that we neglect the young people and that we send you out into these schools and we don't teach you exactly what to do that in one generation we're decreasing because we're losing our family we're losing our children and that is why muslims and islam is growing because they're keeping their family and we are losing them so what do we need to do i'm telling you right now you guys have to work so hard that this doesn't keep happening especially in the church today because the problem is is within and warfare within with sin and corruption you guys have to work very hard more than any other generation i believe that has ever existed because there is so much temptation so much peer pressure hitting you guys i do believe that you you guys are a chosen generation I believe that you were more spiritually minded than our generation ever could be. Could be. And I do believe that what you do today, like I said, is going to shape and it's going to be the outcome of what you do tomorrow. So don't make mistakes that are going to destroy the rest of your life. To gain wisdom that comes from spirituality. Let me read one more verse. And... It's going to be in Proverbs 3.13 uh, and 18. Because I do feel that you guys are struggling so much with just this bombardment of sin and misery and uh, depression. But let me, let me show you the word, what the word tells you. And it's about wisdom. It says in verse 13, and we'll go through or 18, it says, Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than, the, than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. 
and she is talking about wisdom and all the things that you may desire cannot compare with her length of days is in her right hand that means long life in her left hand riches and honor prosperity her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain in her wisdom gained early ensures a good start and a good finish in life so if there's something like i said to walk away reading the word gaining that wisdom of the holy spirit that will ensure you a good life and happiness and riches and long life and that is what we need especially in these dark times today so in conclusion spirituality and youth yes it is possible and it is very needed many young people have proven this we saw in, in, in the bible and scripture despite warfare that we face within and without by trusting in the lord and looking to him for strength ensuring that their lives were blessed by god from start to finish young people do do you want the best for your life how many want the best obviously everybody well let those examples like joseph and daniel mary timothy be your role models accept the call to serve god in the prime of youth serve the lord with all your heart and you will not be disappointed amen the, mis the mistakes that you make at this age like i said will will affect you for the rest of your life but if you do these things pray worship him seek out his wisdom i'm telling you god will bless you and will be the help that you need when you need it amen let us pray dear father king of kings and lord of lords we worship you and we give you thanks and we give you praise we thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to be here, for letting us uh, read over your word, for you to give us insight, to give us knowledge and wisdom. I ask, Father God, for an anointing upon this, this church, Father God, and upon, uh, upon all these young people, that you give them the strength and the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to go out into the world. And not just to, 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 to be filled with your spirit, just during church hours but but when we leave service and and we are confronted with the world head on whether it be at 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 work or at school or at uh anywhere where we are enticed and tempted by evil i ask father for your anointing for as i know that this generation is a chosen generation and is powerful in, in your name we love you so much and we give all the glory and all the honor to you in Jesus' name, we love you, we worship you, and we give you all the praise. And in Jesus' name, we say, amen. Hallelujah. Well, everybody, um, I guess, okay, they're going to pass out the questions for chapter, Acts chapter 3. <clears throat> and uh, uh, next time we come in, is it better that I just let volunteers do I just ask for volunteers to answer the questions or should I like pick on people? I'm afraid that I pick, if I, if, if I know I'm going to pick on you, uh, you're not going to come. So what if you don't do your, it's like doing your homework. It's like, I'm going to skip. So we'll see. I'll let y'all think about that. But uh, God bless y'all. And like I said, I'm not sure they'll announce it from uh, the sanctuary for next Sunday. But if, if not, Juan is supposed to present the message next next week is uh, Palm Sunday, and if we are not in the other uh, in the big sanctuary, we might still be here. But the following week, which is Resurrection Sunday, we won't. We'll all stay in the in the, the big sanctuary. Okay. God bless you, and we will see you next Sunday.